Well, obviously, uh, just to s- summarize the last week, uh, proud of our guys of how they not only the two games that got most of the attention with Syracuse and Oklahoma, but the Sunday game too to be able to come back and um, you know regroup from the trip to Maui and, and play pretty well uh, on Sunday, and then in one day play that well against Syracuse, and and then really a totally different type of game on uh, Saturday with Oklahoma. So really happy for our players. They put in a lot of time, a lot of work, and have really been good at attention to detail and adjusting on the fly and executing things for the most part how we want. So looking forward to this week. Uh, Idaho State will be, uh, we'll see a variety of defenses, I think. I've known Bill Evans for a while. He was at Montana when Freddie Owens was there as an assistant. So he's kind of the guru of the zone defense and combination defenses out in that Idaho, Utah, Montana region. Um, and then obviously we'll flip the page to Marquette uh, once Wednesday night's over. But uh, like I said, just happy for our guys. And it's a fun group to coach, it's a fun group to be around. Back to Trice for a second. I mean, you've talked about his leadership, you know, football, basketball, his poise, all that. But when you guys were recruiting him, did you anticipate he would be as dangerous a three-point shooter so early, so consistently? No, because I really didn't look at him as that was – with that in mind, that's, that's what we needed from him. So that's kind of been a bonus. I wanted just some, you know, just a insurance policy, so to speak, uh, you know, just somebody to solidify the backcourt, to just give us, give us a sound decision maker. And, and anything that was going to come on top of that was going to be a bonus. Um, and really we recruited him just to make good decisions and facilitate and, and then have the other parts grow. But – you know, obviously, I think his he's um, transcended probably a little faster than any, everybody's anticipation, including ours. You had mentioned after the Syracuse game that, you know, if Nigel continues to play like this, he'll have other opportunities maybe to get triple doubles or produce or you know, have the points and numbers and what have you. Uh, he's an intelligent young man, but do you think after games like he's played the last two that he realizes, okay, this, this is what I've got to do? Well, I think the whole team realizes – this is how we need to play in terms of more than individuals individually specific and i think that's been the neat part about watching you know some guys individually or us collectively as a team kind of mature to understand what makes us good and then what can make us make us really good and uh, as i said saturday in the post game that ironically the same things that make nigel really really good in a hard matchup are the same things that make us a really difficult matchup as a team when it's all everybody's on the same page so i, I think that's the been the process they're grow, growing through and you know you're only as good as your next outing so um, we'll learn from when we walk watch film here in another 45 minutes what went good on saturday and what we need to improve upon and and then prepare for wednesday but definitely i see they now get a chance to see hey when we do X, Y, and Z, we're, we're pretty efficient. I think the intent, that was always my, my uh, I guess, request from them, is what is your intent here offensively? What is our – I don't get too caught up in numbers or the quantity. It's always the quality and the intent of what we're trying to accomplish. And I think our intent has been more in tune with what makes us good.